Well, guys, it is 8.30 on the dot, so we're gonna just go ahead and call the meeting to order. Um, Amy, can we certify that the open meeting law requirements have been met? Yes, they were. And can we get a roll call of the committee members, please? Nutter here. Sorge here. Severson here. Adams here. Oh, and online, Jean? Oh, Jean. Um, yeah, her. Yes. I'm going to text her. She's on mute. We are here. Okay, we're going to text her and make sure that she can say that she is here. I think we can see her. So. Could you hear me? Yes, there you go, hon. All right. So, Jeannie, if you want to just say that you're here, we'll have our roll call complete. Galazinski here. At a girl. All right. Then we'll go to the adoption of the agenda. I'll make a motion to adopt the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Perfect. Um, and then we go to the approval of the 7 2 224 regular meeting notes or meeting notes. Yeah. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Then we'll go to the public um, comment section. The call in number is 715 538 1894. <laughs> And we'll have 15 minutes to go ahead and call that in. In the meantime, we'll just roll on through our, our uh, oh, we have some people. All right, wonderful. Never, she's like, I've got public comments and I'm not oh, calling in, I'm right here. here. <laughs> I'm right here, all right. And, now, okay. Make sure these are on? Okay, there you go. And then Thank if, you you. Would, if you would just for, for the notes, just go ahead and state your name. And um, and we have three minutes is, is my understanding. Is that so correct? So somebody wave when it's three I'll, minutes. I'll wave, yeah. I'll, I'll so wave. turning on the speaker, yeah. please, after watching 15 hours of these this committee in the last three days, please turn on your speakers when you're speaking, and especially for those that are not here, to identify who your voices are. Perfect. So I'm Linda Mossman. I own the Oak Park Inn here in Whitehall, Wisconsin, and I have recently become a sole woman-owned business. Fortunately, at this time in my life, I'm not looking to expand. I'm not necessarily even looking to grow my business. However, there are economic indicators that I follow and monitor from Trumplow County and have been doing so for many years. I look at the equalized value, which you all use every year for those of you the budgets, I look at the total sales tax collection by month for the county. I look at the tourism revenue and the sales tax that that contributes. I watch the general fund balance. I'm maybe one of the few citizens that do that. The expenditures tell me a lot, when, plus what that balance is. I look at your budgets. I look at new building permits issued. And I look at the census because I want to know where the people are migrating, maybe even within this county are. Mm -hmm. Because I'm very concerned that I want to protect my asset. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm looking for. Um, I usually rely on unique, well-staffed museums, retail shops, farm stands, markets, orchards, restaurants, wineries, and taverns to enhance my guest experience, have done that for years. I'm always disappointed when a guest returns and they tell me stories of understaffed facilities, closed due to staffing not appearing for work, and that usually leads the guest to say to me, no one wants to work anymore. And then I go into my one-third, one-third, one-third story. But for today, I wanted to make sure I used the actual numbers so I'm not misrepresenting anything. The total census of Trumplow County on July 1st was 30,899 people. Maybe you knew that, maybe you didn't. Of that, 33% of them are students, 18 and younger, so they're not full-time in this workforce. 
19% are 65 and older. They're not going to be full-time in this workforce. So that leaves exactly 14,903 people that are a full-time employable age. Now, the employee unemployment rate per the Federal Reserve on July, no, May of this year was roughly 3.1% for Trepolo County. Of the 14,903 people that are employable, 3.1% of that equals 473 people. To me, that means anybody that can work is working. This is not something that there's people hiding out in the coolies not doing anything. Today, Arlene is here. I don't know if Inga's gonna make it from around the farm table, but they are two hardworking emerging entrepreneurs in the on the farm tourism segment. Buzz has spoken to this to you several times. I've heard him in the committee meetings recently. The nice thing about their type of business, they're women owned, they're small, they do not require a heavy labor force. So they're not pulling from someone else. They're not taking a job or an, from another employer. They don't need roads and electrical improvements like the transmission lines we're talking about. Mm -hmm. However, they do require reliable broadband, which comes into the beads because these people know far more about digital marketing than I care to even learn today, and they do it very well. I don't, so I admit it. So my question is, how can we help them and others that are considering to be like them to be successful? Are my three minutes up? Okay, I would ask you to put an educational component into this committee. Buzz, no, Sarah Sipple. Bring her in here, have her do her show. What does she have? What does she have to offer? And then you guys can put a face to a name to an acronym. And I don't expect Dave and Kevin, or yeah, these guys. You guys always offer to help, help them maybe do this. Thank Wonderful. you. Wonderful. Thank you, Linda, very much for that. Um, do we have uh, other folks that would like to make a comment. Yes. If you want to introduce yourself and where you're from so that. Yes, my name is Arlena Schott. I am the marketing creator and manager of the Farmer's Garden Market here in Whitehall. I would just like to introduce us and, uh, and just tell you a little bit about our um, growing market and how we enjoy so much that the community has become and used it as a community space. I am accompanied by John and Connie Skaug. They are um, the Windy Ridge Garlic Farm that comes as a farm family regularly to the market. They also, John is also the president of the chapter for the farmer, it's the Farmers Union um, Wisconsin. Wisconsin Farmers Union, sorry about that, John, um, chapter for Jackson in Trempolo County. So he is my backup here today, and Connie as well. Um, I just wanted to say um, we are dedicated to educating the community on where our food comes from. It's not just a space we're providing, we're providing a face to the farm, to the farm families, to the artisans that grow and that come to the farmer's garden market. We also have live music every Friday. Um, we have continued to do that since the beginning when we open in May and we will continue that through uh, end of October. We have local vegetables, artisans, and we just really absolutely love providing a space for them to come and sell their wares and grow their business and we do not charge a fee for that because we feel that um, if I have to sell a tomato and I have a $25 fee how many tomatoes do I have to sell or how many pieces of garlic before I make up that fee? And it's just not feasible. Um, we, we do, however, um, have a wonderful space that's provided to us, but we do do some, some um, things for it. We do the maintenance sometimes of the, of the area. We're working on something to do with the barn as far as the roof. We um, provide a little electrical help for the, for the space. Um, there's lots of things that we do in exchange for our beautiful space, but we are the face. Um, we are 
a community space. And, late, and lately, I don't know if you've, I know, I shouldn't say I don't know, um, Whitehall Historical Foundation continues to celebrate 150 years of Whitehall. Mm -hmm. um, Linda Mothman and uh, several of us are on the committee and we have had amazing events and you know I'll buy the veterans um, quilt program, honor quilt program, the garden walk, the historical homes, um, uh, the kickoff, the the, local, the baseball game that was just this past week or so. The next event, which is dear to my heart, is at the Farmer's Garden Market. It's a period market, and that's August 16th, where we are celebrating with the Historical Foundation, um, the Whitehall Historical Foundation, a period market where we would like to put a face to the farms, farmers. And we're going to hopefully all dress period style and then hopefully ha lots of demonstrations um, cooking live music again games for the children it's a free event um, that allows the community to come out without it costing a whole bunch of money to come um, we also um, have an arts authors and photography event at the farmers market we love providing a space for these these local community events um, and uh, Amanda Hagee from the library and the friends of the library are handling that event and that's August 20, uh, 12th I believe or October excuse me October and you can see all this on our Facebook page um, ADRC is greatly involved with us and we're involved with them for the pure fact that they provide senior vouchers to the seniors and uh, uh, by signing up the seniors. They came, they were hit there last market, I believe, market before, and they handed out the senior vouchers. And that, to me, is a huge part of the community and how it helps the community provide uh, 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 healthy things for it. Okay, Stuff the Bus, Pigeon Falls Stuff the Bus will be there. Um, Lutheran Pigeon, uh, Peace Lutheran Church, warm coats and hats and gloves for the kids. Local restaurants have shopped there for their local produce. Chamber, we had chamber dinner up in the barn, absolutely beautiful, it was a little warm, but we did that. Other markets have grown. Um, our market has grown, but we continue to watch it uh, develop and we are focused on the community, we're focused on the farms, families, and the faces of the farm families and how they are changing. Um, so thank you very much. Yes. Ma'am, what's the name of your, the Facebook page you're part of again? Oh, there is the Wisconsin Historical Foundation, why, Whitehall, Wisconsin, Whitehall, Wisconsin. Uh, Historical Foundation. That one has the events. Yep. And then the Farmer's Garden Market has also has uh, a Facebook page as well that we continue to do. And I do radio on WHTL every Friday. It's called the Farmer's Garden Market Report. And that is also not funded. We have to ask for for uh, donations to fund th those, those those things. Projects. And we are not funded by uh, Chamber. We're not funded by uh, Trumpelow County. We're not funded by anybody right now. So we're really proud of how it's growing, but we would love to watch it grow further for Trumpelow County. Awesome. Well, thank you for that education. Thank That's you. awesome and great. Thank, thank you so you. much. And now we have, if you want to again state your name and where you're from. Sure. Um, I'm Carol Birkland, uh, Arcadia. I am the curator of the Arcadia Historical Society, and I also manage the Wannick Art Center. Not the Wannick Center, the Art Center. It's all in the same building. Okay. I'm going to take a little bit different track with you. Um, I was on the Tourism Council a couple decades ago. We won't age ourselves too bad. Trumplow County had their own visitor's guide, and we have not had one in forever. And I guess I don't understand. Now, I picked this up. Trumplow County's got yep. this much of the county in it. Anything north of Galesville is not addressed at all. I take it back. Arcadia's got a little dot, if you look at it, with a magnifying glass. My question is, why hasn't this council began making that is a great question. It's actually, we're actually all over it. We feel the exact same way that you do, and we are going to have something, we've, we're working on it diligently. I mean, I've you're, talked you're to the- You're 100% right. I've There's talked to no, the city council, and I can't, sorry to interrupt. I've oh, talked no. to the city council. Um, they're willing to, I know I'm on funding. We can get, I think each, each community between their chambers mm -hmm. and their councils, I think you could get it. 
We've mm -hmm. got to keep people coming north, and I'm a firm believer that we have to have return people come. They leave money. You bet. I we, have, have, we will sign, put this in the notes, we will yes. sign you up for that sales committee. I, because we I, are I will gladly it take it. Perfect, perfect. I used to do the bus tours with Olin. Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. to the Memorial Park as he do. We haven't had one bus tour in this county for at least two years. What's Good wrong? Point. Yes. Right. What's wrong? I think it's and, than two years. Yeah. Well, probably. We still have the maps of the bus tour. That, you know. See? Yeah. So well, and please. You're right. We we need updated, fresh. Yes. Please, yes. please, please work yeah. on a visitor's guide for next year. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. You're so welcome. Do we have anyone well, else? One more word. Oh, sure. Jean and her committee have done a heck of a job with this. My husband and I just took three days and ran away, and we followed through this uh. and got down past Dubuque. It was nice. It's, it's very well put together. We can do it here, too. You bet. Thank you so much for that. We appreciate it. And make sure, Amy, we sign her up on that. All right. Anyone else that would like to speak? Okay. Yes. I just changed from Edison. But anyway, um, Donnie Kloss's wife, Marie, passed away, which I'm sure you all know. Um, and what the family would like to do in the obituary is um, say, in lieu of flowers, please consider donations to um, Petrick Park, in particular the Donnie Kloss Center for upkeep and renovations or things that may happen. So I talked to Jack about it today, um, and I think what I'll have, <clears throat> if it's all right, I mean, I th it's totally fine. The family can do what they want. They want to collect all the money, and then they would send it to um, Jack, maybe, in one check. Does that okay. seem fine? Is that, okay. Yep, all right, we can certainly talk about okay, that. Okay, but I just wanted people to know that yep. Maria has passed away. And okay, thank you so much for that. In case you don't know, the class center is named after her husband. Thank you. That's a great segue into what I'm going to speak about. I'm Doreen Olson, and I want to not only introduce myself as being from Independence and here in the county for many years, um, but why I keep coming to this meeting. Um, my family was next door to Petrick Park. Have uh, We knew Joe and Emily, consoled them when their son died. Emily and Joe sat in my parents' home talking about the donation of the land and why they were donating it. Um, I sat many hours with Ray Shanklin, the prior county 4-H uh, uh, gentleman. Don't know the correct term for him. But anyhow, on what he wanted to do and to be a mini Upton Woods. So anyhow, our family has had anniversaries there, family gatherings. Um, a cancer fundraiser, and two celebrations of life. As you stated, we had money sent to Petrick Park. When we found out our daughter was dying, I asked her what she wanted to have her memorial money sent to. She said the state system, state park system. I go, I think your money could, with us helping, make a bigger impact at Petrick Park. So what I want to say today is that with all the donations, not only financial, but also Elk Rod and Gun Club, 4-H clubs, people donating time. My brother came with machinery to help restore the, the trails and to do the water, uh, the rain garden. So there has been a lot of time and effort put into the park. I was a little disheartened to hear about the water feature. I must say, I was not at those past meetings when decisions were made. I know there was a grant written. It takes time to write grants. It was sent back. You have six acres of land that could be taken back if this committee does not move. We've had a lot of changes, not only in the county, but also on this committee. New members are good. When you came, we found out how we could 
upgrade the system for camping. So new knowledge is good, but don't forget the tacit knowledge that other members who have been here for a long time bring to the committee. You have to move faster. Sometimes I see things being asked over and over and over again, and you don't move forward. You must move forward. You have to be an advocate, not only for the park, but for the tourism that comes in, because it helps them. It helps them. It brings dollars in here. Um, I'm working a little part-time at a restaurant, and they picked up the map from Petrick Station. That's how I ended up finding out where it was located, this place in Independence, to do the rides through Trempeau County. Also, they ended up using the state nap. So please move forward for not only for Petrick Park, but for the whole county. We understand and agree. So thank, thank you. you very, very much. Anyone Thanks, else that, that um, needs to make a public comment? <sighs> All right, I think we've used our, our time on that. Um, we're gonna go right into the Wisconsin Great River Road. Um, Jean, you are up. I think you have to close public comment. Oh, okay, sorry. So it's official, can sorry. We, yeah, can we officially close public comment? Yes. Move to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. All right, wonderful. Jeannie, are you ready to go ahead with the uh, um, your report? Can you hear me? Yes. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming to the meeting for public comment. Um, I appreciate that. I apologize. I'm not there in person. I have another meeting I need um, to attend. In regards to the update on the Wisconsin Great River Road, the September 18th through the 20th Mississippi River Parkway Commission National Meeting is going to be held in Winona. And if you'd like to participate and come to the annual meeting and learn more about the state of Wisconsin's Great River Road as well as the whole 10 states of the Wisconsin Great River Road, you can go to the Mississippi River Parkway Commission.com, click on the national meeting, see details, and then um, more information, and that can get you the information you need. In regards to the 2025 Wisconsin Great River Road Visitor Guides, we are in the process of an RFP, which means <clears throat> request for proposal. In regards to printing companies, quotes on uh, designer and sales people. We already have our designer and our salesperson um, will be uh, ready to go for the agenda meeting on Friday. Um, and then we will go through the printing companies. In review of the RFP, again, request for proposal, um, the Wisconsin Great River Road is doing a um, GEM grant, and that's looking for someone, to, we're doing like management, web design, things like that to continue to promote the eight counties of the Wisconsin Great River Road. When I receive more information, after this week's meeting, I will provide it to you at our September meeting. Our Discover Wisconsin episode one that you all know that we did, um, I'm waiting to get the broadcast viewership um, numbers that won't be done until the end of July, I believe. Um, however, our digital impressions, 1,860,913. And what that is, is the advertisement or any other form of digital meeting on someone's screen. Digital views, 424,083. Promoting and selling products and services through the internet, on your mobile phone or through social media. We've received 1,000, or I'm sorry, 132,261 emails most of those are asking for the Great River Road Visitor Guide, Wisconsin. We've had 3,193 downloaded podcasts. Um, besides the podcast, they're also doing um, postcards. And if you go to Discover Wisconsin 
and you click on the Wisconsin Great River Road, it'll provide you with the episode as well as the postcards and podcasts. Um, we are in hopes that we will be able to find funding for episode um, number two, and I'll be able to provide you more information um, that at the September meeting. Um, in regards to the GEM grant, I have asked um, Becky as the Temple County Administrator, Dave as the Economic Development Tourism Director, the Village of Tremplo and the Tremplo County or Tremplo Chamber of Commerce to write a letter of support. Saturday, Wisconsin Great River Road was at the Wisconsin State Fair. It was a huge success. We went through 10 boxes of our visitor guides. One of the things that was asked for is the Wisconsin State bike map or any other bike maps available. There are no Wisconsin State bike, bike maps in print and there haven't been for a while. That information has been passed along to the Wisconsin Department of Transportation as well as put it on our radar and I think it's something that we've talked about, our committee, our PTEC committee has talked about in regards to biking. And I know Linda's there um, and her son has done all of the loop. Um, I think that um, information needs to be incorporated in where we go forward in our budget um, to promote somehow uh, finances to promote biking. Um, so, yeah, so in the booth, um, was NATO, which is the Native American Tourism of Wisconsin. We got to meet the new executive director, Kimberly A. McKishit, and we were also in the booth with Wisconsin Badgerland Camp, which is out of um, Grant County. So I think that's it. I have a meeting um, tomorrow, and I have a meeting on Wednesday for updates, and I'll be able to provide you more information. Does anybody have any questions? Hearing none, thank you very if much. Not, thank you for your time. I will be on the call until 10 o'clock and then I have to leave. Thank you so much, Jean. Perfect. All right. And then the next um, item that we have is item eight, economic development and tourism report. Dave? All right. I'm up for three <clears throat> items in a row, so I'll try and be brief here. Okay. Because so I know we got a lot going. Um, just a few highlights from the past month. We did have our Quad County Bead Broadband Equity and Diversity um, meeting um, with our other three county partners, uh, Pierce, Buffalo, and Pepin. That was July 9th. We've got a consultant on board to be really doing a deep dive on where are the service gaps. And that means anything that's for sure under 25 megabits per second um, uh, download and five, that they actually re revised the standard now. It's 100 megabit per second that they're looking for minimum standards. So basically this money that's coming out in the next couple of years for a really building out broadband in unserved and underserved areas is going to go to those places first. So the good news is Trempolo County's got some of those. Oh, yeah, it's the bad news. But the good news is there's money coming for that, and those will be prioritized. So we had that kickoff meeting July 9th with the consultant, and I'll be updating the committee. Um, we had quite a bit of um, correspondence uh, coming to us and correspondence and conversations going out regarding this whole co-op trout rearing uh, issue that I'm sure you've seen all over you know, Facebook and in the press. Um, I did meet with the Village of Trempolo Historical Society last week, and I'm more than happy to come meet with you know, any of the historical societies anytime, just invite me. Well, any weekend you come down to Arcadia, I'll just Okay, all right. Um, well. But that is, I mean, history really is one of the things we can market. Um, and there's, there's people that would love to just come up for a whole weekend and touring around and finding out about the different pieces of history. So that is not lost on us. Um, Becky and I met last week with uh, Mark Tolman, our regional economic development rep from WEDC, Wisconsin Economic Development Corp, as well as John Bingle from Mississippi River Regional Planning Commission, just talk about some of the 
products and services they have that can assist us. Um, I did attend a meeting last week uh, up in Fall Creek at the Beaver Creek Reserve. The USDA Under Secretary for Rural Development, Dr. Basil Gooden, was there, and he was there to announce that <clears throat> um, an eight county group, which includes Trempolo County, has received a rural business development grant of $70,000 to look at how we can better build out our outdoor recreational opportunities as an eight county region. Um, and so that's really exciting. We've just are in the starting stages of that. There'll be asset uh, inventories being updated for that. And then we will be working with a consultant and the goal of that and this is this is like two years in the making now this rural partners network outdoor recreation group that's been meeting and i've been a part of um, the goal really is to in the end have a region that can be marketed you know to attract people from a very wide area okay you know put it on par with you know some of the other bigger outdoor recreation areas you can think of in the state um, so that's very exciting. <clears throat> and then the final thing I will mention is we've made some progress, not quite there yet with the Arcadia Overlook in terms of getting those trees trimmed up there. I talked last month with the property owner. He's amenable to doing it. Now we're into having some conversations with DOT just about the specifics and Becky has become involved with that. So I have no doubt we'll, we'll make some progress and get that done. And we're, we're shooting to try to get something done before fall colors so stay tuned um, visitors guide I will just mention it so it's not hanging out there um, we are working towards getting a meeting set up with somebody that's potentially you know able to help us with sort of a, a turnkey type approach to a visitors guide um, you know with being able to go out and sell the ads des design the thing where all we'd have to do is provide and I don't want to say all we have to do but provide the con the editorial content photo photos all of that kind of thing it's just going to be so much easier an approach but just to set the record straight too so that nobody thinks we haven't had anything we do have you know a fold out brochure that we have been using for several years now um, somebody ordered I don't know 20 25,000 of them and like five years four years ago we've been working through those but 100% in agreement we need something and we're working towards that and that's really all I've got in my report. Oh, okay, Lori. wonderful. You want to move on to the next um, yep. item? All right, so the next thing is just an update on the GEM grant project. I just wanted to pull that out separately mm -hmm. so it didn't get lost. <clears throat> Lori and Jean and Becky and I reviewed four different uh, proposals that were submitted to our request for proposals for, pre for professional marketing services for the GEM grant project. And we have made an offer, which has been accepted to work with Pilch and Barnett out of Madison. Uh, they, are, they have an excellent reputation um, statewide. They've done some really big projects. In fact, I think they work with the National Mississippi uh, River, Great, Great River Road project. So we have a kickoff meeting, I think, set in two weeks. I don't have, I think it's the 18th uh, or something like that. Anyways, it's coming up. Uh, so stay tuned on that. And, uh, you know, like I said, I was very happy we got four. I didn't know what to expect. Little old Trumpelow County, $17,000 budget. But we got four really solid proposals. So that's it on that one, Lori. Okay. Then if you want to just move right into the economic... Oh, we did that one, I guess, right? So then we'll be on... SRF, the consulting oh, no. plan? Ten. Or did I miss one? Ten, sorry. Economic development, there you go. So my name's on that one, but I'm going to defer to Becky on gotcha. that. She okay. and I have been working together on that. and. Uh, so. Yeah, so just to touch on this, um, you, you received uh, the handout that's the Community Development Initiative Development Grant and Lund, uh, Loan Fund Proposal. Um, we don't really need any action on this. This was kind of discussion as well for the exec finance committee um, in talking about these uh, funds that are available and these two committees kind of have had this discussion previous. Um, 
So the proposal was to use the CapEx, CapEx funds as well as rebate funds to build a um, community development grant and loan fund uh, to hopefully help businesses as we're talking about in tourism in our uh, county uh, to build on that as well as um, look at potential for a um, facade improvement program for the county. Um, so basically we're at a at a research and development phase and kind of looking at what could that look like. The proposal is again um, after talking with this group and making sure that we identify some of those funds for Petrick Park specific. So looking at setting aside $50,000 specific to the park and we've had really good conversations with Jack about um, projects that we could still take forward at the in this year so that we complete uh, some projects this year and that we're um, moving some of those things forward and Jack will share um, his priorities and, and what we think we can get done and it's a lot of work yet on the on the part of uh, Dave and myself to continue to bring forward what again the project would look like and there's that catalyst program opportunity, and that's part of what we met with WEDC with and looking at how uh, a match program could actually grow the funds uh, so that we would have more available. Uh, so it's, it's a conversation yet piece that's coming, but uh, I just wanted to bring that forward to update and uh, that we'll, we'll bring further information back as we move that forward. Wonderful, thank you. Any questions on that? What about SFR? I, thought. I guess that's the next thing. If we is that the next oh, thing we want to get into? Okay. okay. So SFR consulting. Oh, SFR. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I messed up. Okay. I spent some time on the phone with Sarah Austi this morning at MRPC, and uh, you know she was tossing around like seven hundred thousand dollars. Various interest rates from very low to just a bit below market. How are you incorporating those funds and access to those funds into our strategy so we can maybe use more money for park development out of that uh, money that's coming from the power line fund? So I mean, that's a huge amount of money yeah. sitting down there and it's not being utilized. Uh, some of it as low as 1%. Yeah, I, I can answer that, Buzz. That's the business capital fund, and well, it's there's like three funds. She talked yeah, but about. there's only yeah, but there's only one that that can be used by Trempeleau County businesses. Well, that's not what she said. No, this that's okay. I, Maybe we should have her come to a meeting. Uh, the, yeah. the business capital fund is Trempeleau County's part of that one, with I think five other counties, and that one has about just shy of five hundred thousand. Yeah, she said I think it's down to around three twenty. Yeah, right. <clears throat> and that one is, first off, MRRPC does not market that a lot. I do quite a bit of a referral on that. So if I get a business that's asking, hey, you know, do you have some business startup funds? The answer is we don't as Trempolo County, but I refer them continually to MRRPC. That one is set up and it's more <clears throat> based historically on job creation. So like, you know, they give 25 Forty thousand dollars, you know, per job created. Um, as you can tell, it's it's not really geared to be like a business startup, like a catalyst type program. And that's the gap that we're missing. That you know, I think we're really kind of trying to figure out: can we can we find something that we put together locally that can be more nimble in terms of providing startup money to you know mm -hmm. these small businesses like the folks that talked to us today about. Uh, could tap into, so, you know. So Dave, so for people that um, don't necessarily have employees that are going to be able to correct right away. She kind of said it was more for targeting, not so much employees, but uh, actual business needs, be it uh, tech needs or be it a piece of equipment needs or yeah. storefront development or mm -hmm. real estate purchases. We talked about those types of needs that seem to make a lot of sense. 
is what she was referring to, the monies that. So the, an the, the, answer, the answer to your question, Buzz, is yes, we're aware of it. Yes, we've promoted it. Um, I, think double, I think MRPC made two or three loans off of it last year. <clears throat> but again, it's just, it, in, you know, unless they're, unless they're contemplating making changes to it, it's more of a traditional revolving loan type fund. Right. It's more geared towards established businesses. And it's, that's good. I mean, you, you need to have that in your, in your toolkit. But the, it doesn't really address the needs of startup businesses. MRPC did administrate the Main Street Bounce Back program through WEDC when they were giving out those $10,000 grants, you know, to keep, get people into vacant storefronts or keep them in. But I just don't, I, I just, you know, especially since that money could be sucked up by one loan, you know, next, you know, next week, you know, in another county, we can't rely on that to be our. I think. Yeah, I guess I'm still concerned that until we get this rescoping, from, uh, and that's the next thing to talk about with SRF, that what are our long-term needs? Very much like Doreen laid out, what are we going to do with that six-acre parcel, mm -hmm. and how's that being rescoped? That we've got the money and resources needs there to help with that also. Yep, that's a great question. Becky, do you want to? Yeah, so to your point, though, Buzz, if there are, I mean, we do need to make sure that we're not duplicating services, that's for sure. So I would say, Dave, you know, if and I, if we could do a follow-up meeting, and we'll certainly talk and, and listen to Sarah. I think, though, it was more the idea of uh, looking at local businesses, and, and generally a lot of those funds focus on job creation, and that's not what we're what our hope is is to look more at uh, startups for small business that we feel that there's a gap but we will uh, definitely let's follow up and set up a meeting with sarah to talk to her about this because i want to make sure that we're not missing uh if there are funds that we can capitalize on absolutely we want to do that uh, we'll get into the srf piece right yep, wait right, next right next question right do that. unless we want to discuss anything more on the economic development initiative but i think the that's the part of like we don't know yet we'll continue to we're investigating and researching and so that's what we want to bring forward a solid plan um before we move things forward but we would like to identify at least fifty thousand of those funds to move some projects forward so that we get some things done at that park yes. before the end of the year so that's that's the bigger part that will come up from jack okay so yes um the i don't maybe the whole committee doesn't know but it was through an exec finance meeting last month that this hundred and sixty thousand dollars was brought you can correct me if i'm wrong was brought forth and they allotted only 50 out of that money to go to the park. No. That's no. what I heard. But I, you know, I'm totally could be wrong and need to be corrected. So the discussion was is uh, no action was really taken. It was, we have this thought, this is what we think we should be moving forward on. This is what we would like to identify. Do you ha give us the heads up on moving forward on research and coming back with some plans for you? And this is our idea of how the funds should be used. Are you in agreement with us moving forward on research and bringing those plans back okay. to you? And it was I, agreed yeah, upon. I do need to be corrected. It wasn't at the meeting. It was at a special meeting they had prior to the county board meeting. And it, I was told by people at that meeting that the decision was made only 50,000 would go to the park. Well, so it was not it a decision. decision it was, no, because the board hasn't. Yeah. Been, yeah. Okay. It, well, so I'm sorry. But that's been, what I. That's what I was told. It hasn't been voted. Yeah. On, you know, okay. it was just yeah, a, as again a, a research and development. So it's of, still just sitting there. Yes. Okay. Well, let's get into this part of it, and then maybe we can get it. Yes. Not okay. There. All right. Um, so, do you, Jack? Do you want to start talking about the sure. consulting rescope? Uh, yeah. I, Oh, yeah. I think if you want to... Hey, or Dave, whoever wants to... Go ahead, <laughs> Jack. I apologize. Jack, you always gonna, get the uh, short thing. stick here. Um, so, yeah, we've had some good conversations with Phil, and um, I know that there is just kind of a mix on what's the overall plan for the park, and we're trying to come, that, come to that decision as a group. Um, we feel like that's kind of the best uh, decision going forward, meet 
me, Becky, and Dave kind of talking things out when it comes to SRF. Um, so I'm going to give it over to Becky. Um, she's going to take the lead on this discussion. So we've had a lot of discussion about the park and how that moves forward. And so I think um, I, I wanted to follow up with SRF because uh, part of this whole discussion and bring it back to you one more time, you had given approval for SRF to spend so many funds out of the park funds to move forward on planning. At first it was again, initially for this pond, we backed off from that. Uh, we brought some initial ideas forward to you and talking about um, what could potentially happen with the six acres at, at Petrick Park. Um, and so the, we had a discussion, we meaning Dave and Jack and myself with Phil in talking about our vision for that. Um, Phil was excited about that in talking about, again, how we might create um, a park area that was more natural, um, was a hill creation that would feature the hills of Trempolo County, walking paths throughout that, as well as historical information, um, highlighting kind of features of the county. Um, he came back with the estimate that you saw on what that's going to cost to rescope and go through this planning at uh, over $39,000. I followed up then with this conversation because of concern that that's a seemed like a high price tag and, and I went through kind of the breakdown with him on the cost. Um, so in talking with him, um, I guess the, the thing I wanted to bring back into this committee again was to say the funds are already set aside and identified to work with SRF. If you're good with us moving forward, I do believe this would give us a really good plan and a really good idea for what could happen on that park property. So I'd like to just, again, it's already been approved in the past. I just wanted to get, again, a thumbs up from the committee if you want to move forward in that fashion. I think it's a broader discussion, though, and that's, uh, I, I think we go ahead with this if you're good with that plan and moving that forward, um, we just wanted to make sure that that scope was still in what you wanted to do. I guess the broader plan comes or the broader discussion becomes the cost of that and what that looks like. I've identified that cost and put it into writing for a, a Knowles stewardship grant for 2026 and then the extra funding through fundraising and actual fundraising through our long-term borrowing and completing that kind of project. But it is a big cost. And so it goes back to looking at our data that we just um, looked at on camp spots on how, that's, uh, how the park is being used. Mm -hmm. Jack's gonna go over that information later. I guess I'd say my concern in saying that park numbers aren't showing that that park is being used. And so, again, we're gonna put a lot of money into a really nice amenity in that park, um, or that's the plan anyway. So I think um, my feeling is this, if you want to go ahead and expend the 39,000 for a plan for a really nice amenity for that park, it's in 2025 that we are really looking and focusing on how we're actually gonna get that park used and where it needs to be. I think in some differences in my experience with county parks that, ha that are used, that campers are using, is that we didn't, I haven't had um, uh, really good private campgrounds in the county as well. And you have really good private campgrounds when you have um, Stony Creek and you have Champions, right? They um, accommodate a lot of camping and I think that they can accommodate a lot more camping. Uh, so the piece is, is will 
Petrick Park be used for camping. I don't know, and that's a part like I, and that's where we're looking at overall as the county where I'm proposing to bring like more marketing tourism into our um, media rather than focusing everything on a cable station is talking about how we're using media to promote the county so that we continue to grow tourism and then will the park be used more and what amenity what other things do we have to include at the park in order to make sure that it would be used mm -hmm. so again I'm a little lengthy but I just my my recommendation is you move forward on the on the design for this knowing that we have to do a lot of work to make sure that that park is going to be used in the future um, it's got to include a marketing component it's got to include more uh, probably some uh, updates to the park and then overall um, figuring out if that investment of that kind of money is going to be worthwhile in the future because are we going to increase the usage on that park so that's where i'm at it's up to you as as you go forward but um, we just want to again that money's already set aside so if you give the thumbs up we can go ahead and say put the plan together my question will be let's put the plan together but in that process of time again is saying a lot of steps need to happen before we implement and say we want to go forward with that big of an expense and the process for that so and i guess guys one of the real big keys is there along with the camping piece of it is you know making sure that you understand the customers that you're getting the customers are very different that want to go to the state parks and the county parks and i think we have to make sure that we have those things available for them one of those things is in especially in our area is the canoeing piece of it um, even though that's a part of our business at champions riverside resort it is not a business we're interested in uh, because everybody wants to canoe on Saturday and we can't really accommodate that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the, the key is to figure out what are some of those natural draws that we can get to that park and that would be like, you know, the, the nature people, if you will. You know, the folks that are really there for that and not other amenities. You know, the, 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 themed weekends, the, those types yeah. of things, you mm -hmm. know, so it, I think it's focusing on that natural piece of it if, if we can, and, and we have some good resources for sure. So mm -hmm. um, I think we probably need that plan in order to get any other grants put together or any other things that we want to look at, right? Um, so I guess to, we don't yeah, really I'm need here. a- This is Jean, I have a question. Go ahead, Jean. For um, me to make sure that I'm understanding everything right, the thirty-nine thousand we've already set aside, and that is for the park only. It, nothing can be taken from that to be put in anything else. Is that correct? So, so when we say it's been set aside, it means that the committee previously, I think, last fall. Uh, voted to spend up to I think it was fifty nine thousand with SRF Consulting, so I'm going to get the accounting term incorrect here, um, but that money has not been encumbered, set aside separately from like our park reserve balance. It's that whatever you sp and we've spent about thirteen fourteen thousand dollars to date with SRF to do some preliminary work on the rec pond. Now we've decided not to go okay. that way. So we still have money left on that contract, but that's going to come out of the park reserve fund and that thus lessen the amount that's available to do other things that that fund otherwise would be used for. And the current balance on that, uh, Amy, two, 200 some thousand at the park reserve? On the parks reserve fund, yes, it's 260 some thousand. Yeah. 260, you said? Mm -hmm. 260,000. Right, so that 39,000, if you spent it all, would reduce that balance by that much. The way that that money gets replenished is through unspent dollars in our budget, so or or um, higher than anticipated revenues too would do it. So if we up utilization, then we potentially grow the balance. But I guess just 
like I said, I, I'm my brain is just not working today. So that money, the the two hundred and sixty thousand, is just there. It's part. I, I mean, and not taking out for marketing anything. I mean, that's just for Dietrich Park. Yes. Correct. Yes. Correct. Yes. Really okay. Yeah. And so what we'd be looking at is this thirty nine thousand that's left over that Becky said would be if P Ted would. Uh, go uh, motion, make a motion on this would be for possible the upkeep and so on and so forth with us trying to understand down the line will the county continue to have money to maintain market um, add to etc and so on is that correct yes, that, yes that is correct and, it, and it's just basically to make sure that the pieces that we are putting in that park that we can maintain and that that it does, that we do fit into what our marketing scope needs to be for that. Does that make sense? And I don't think we really need a motion on it because we've already voted on it, the board already voted on it, so it's just more of an update for you guys and make sure that you're good with it. Right, I just wanted to make sure in my brain, I'm just, for some reason, I just can't get it in my head, so I'm writing notes and numbers and I'm just a little backwards on it, but thank you. You bet. Jean, do you have something to say? Yeah, I I support moving forward with this because um, I think Doreen addressed this. We've we've talked about doing things at the park for 15 years, and we stall, and nothing ever gets done. So um, we need to, in my opinion, we need to make a commitment today. Do we support this park? Do we continue to want to have Petrick Park as part of our our, our being in Trempolo County, do we want to help this park become something that is an attraction to people? I think pe people who come with kids need to have some place for them to play, and the current playground is not accessible, and it's not, I'm not even sure it's 100% safe. But I am, like, so weary of having things stalled. If we can move forward on something... Well, I, 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 think, I think if we look at the agenda, we're looking to move forward on something. So that's that's definitely a positive. Um, I guess, is anyone opposed to the consultant rescope just to look at that? I got yeah. a question, Becky. I thought you brought up some really good points, especially I, like a limiting factor analysis almost. So if we does this just considering uh, to get more people to the park? So if we put this nice playground type development in, do we other have still bottlenecks that are still going to limit people from coming, i.e. The, uh, the bathrooms and the septic? Right, and right. If, the canoe. I mean, you got to be able to, how are we going to, it doesn't look like this is going to address the other limiting factors. And are we going to be coming back to do more planning after this planning? Where are we really getting what we need to get that part to a point, as you laid out, where uh, we, we got people coming there for the reasons they've got the water access in place that when they go to get a shower there's plenty of room in the shower plenty of bathroom access blah 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 so we got the package together or is this just another piecemeal piece and then we're going to come back and say oh we didn't do this and it, that's the concern i have at this yeah, point i think that is like in our long-term planning that is mm -hmm. a priority to make sure that we have all those things addressed and mm -hmm. so jack has been putting price tags on that and then that we're including that in our long-term planning for the future that absolutely those things have to be addressed but why don't we do it in concert now and spend the have, money now yeah, you have to get dollars you could yeah. do that yeah, yeah absolutely and i do think that there are some things very specifically that do have to be improved i mean obviously mm -hmm. the septic and the bathrooms and those kinds of things it's a, the number one issues in any campground period mm -hmm. so i mean whether it's a uh, rustic you know whatever those, well, the reason those i bring that up when we had the water feature in there you know some of those needs were addressed in that part of that planning phase that we were going to have some better access opportunities there so now we're kind of putting another dimension in the park but we still got the limiting factors sitting there uh, at the time so when you go forward i mean is that a smart decision yeah question. jack has been working on it jack. yeah so we we kind of identified and i'll go over this in well maybe park we priorities can 
yeah. just yeah we could probably just move into 12 as long as everybody is comfortable with making sure that those items are covered because I think everybody's in agreement that those basic things have got to be covered mm -hmm. and so we it's really starting point it, it, we really have to have those covered so hopefully that will be kind of in that in that in yeah. Jack's report but yep. if we miss them we can come back how does that sound okay, okay. great okay so moving on to 12 then park yes, priorities please. yeah okay perfect so um in my packet, I went over um, code updates, shank property, Ashley camping, planning, septic, um, Tremple lake lots, and fans in the claw shelter. Um, let me know if you have any questions on that stuff. But moving into um, our discussion, um, so what we want to identify with those CapEx funds is um, doing an upgrade to our septic system and working um, with Aberly, Seminson, and Highcliff on that, on what's really needed um, at the park. Um, right now, I think a focus should be adding water to our electric only sites, 20 through 35. People are gonna wanna hook up um, to both. There's no point of just having electric. So 20 through 35 should have water, um, and as well as looking at our claw shelter um, and making sure that's where we're getting most of our money is is those sites one through 19 mm -hmm. and the claw shelter. So doing what we can um, to making sure those, those amenities um, are good moving forward and we make improvements to maybe invite more people um, to use those facilities. So definitely septic um, and then some, so we've got potentially some funds with CapEx that we might be able to use um, would like to take care of that launch, um, that canoe and kayak launch, and I'll be going over um, my plan and probably having some discussion on the motion I prepared. Um, but I would like to have some discussion on that and maybe come up with the motion as a committee. And then uh, the fencing on the Shank property. There is a part in the easement um, that we talked to Tom Shank about um, where he's gonna want fencing to block off um, the cattle if we're gonna have a natural play area. So I'm looking into that. Um, I'm favoring like uh, using his post for $2 a piece. He told me he was gonna sell them. And then we're not gonna want a barbed wire fence, obviously mm -hmm. with having a playground in the middle of it. So looking into wire fencing um, that's not barbed and then using those posts and then also looking into the urban forestry grant um, on the interior of that fencing so it has a better look to it. Um, so that's the plan uh, for the CapEx fund looking into septic, fencing, and launch. As far as septic, if we're adding how many more sites with water, uh, what kind of, how are they gonna size that septic? It's like 10, right? It's, it's like 10 15. 10 or yeah, 15, so we'll okay. upgrade. And is there gonna be any more capacity added to the septic? for future upgrades. So yeah, so we had talked disturbing. about um, an additional tank possibly. Um, and also if there's anything like new added, that it's gotta be like its own thing. Um, Cause if you're doing upgrades to a system that's 27 years old, things are gonna go wrong. So that's, right. that was the main course of the action was we've got. So this is not a total replacement of the existing system? They didn't recommend that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think normally when it was like a time dosage yeah. they recommend um, to help with the circulation and then just adding something new for the new water site. So 20 through 35, adding something new, basically, so we don't have complications. And that's usually kind of a good thing to have two separate ones in case you do have one that fails. Mm -hmm. Then you have a, a sort of a backup, if you will. Um, so I think that's probably a good idea. Right? Anything, any action that, Jack, that we need to take or anything? I don't think okay. there's any action. We just wanted to make sure What's the committee the was aware. On getting this work done then? So there's some things that I can start doing. So I'm starting to do um, the launch. I've communicated, so I'm helping Whitehall Lions and also Indy Elk um, with their launches. So I've kind of got a good, <coughs> set of knowledge on how to get it done for Petrick Park. So I planned a meeting with Kevin Lean, uh, or I will be. Um, we have to have like a pre-prep meeting, um, basically, 
Um, so you can go over everything that the DNR is requiring. So I'll plan to do that in August, set that up. So is Kevin, just looking at it from a water management perspective. Mm -hmm. Yep, Kevin's looking at a water management perspective and I'd also like to loop in the accessibility coordinator for the DNR, yes. um, Nick yeah. Lashko or Lashke. So will you be looking like at an RBF grant for this and recreational boating facilities? No, grant? I asked if I could uh, pair a recreation boating facilities grant with our conservation aids that we got, and I was I was denied by that Bobby Weinberg from so the DNR. Just use conservation aids then. Mm -hmm. So we have fifty two hundred um, with the matching grant, twenty six hundred with the grant funds, and I that hasn't I don't think that's came in. She told me mid July. Um, but I haven't received anything. But you don't have a total project cost estimate yet? Uh, well, it, that will depend. I'll go over that in my canoe and kayak launch um, plan. We have to decide that as a committee, what's the best plan moving forward. We had talked about accessibility, but uh, we also talked about it being on a river. Um, so there's different ways on how to get things done. Um, so if I was to you know, just do a clearing with like cattle slabs, um, that's what Indy Elk is doing and I'm helping them with that permit. So like, and then Whitehall Lions is working with head contracting. Um, so I'll have a couple good examples on how to get it done. Um, and then I'll also have that pre-meeting with, with Kevin on, you know, details. Okay. Jack, uh, with your meeting, or is any way of tying that all together since he's drug his feet so long this summer? Uh, you know, tie in Whitehall, uh, the Elk Rod and Gun Club, and Petrick Park. That's a that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's drug uh -huh. his feet long enough. Absolutely, and yeah, a lot of people have asked him questions, and sometimes it, it's not always him; it's other people. I think there's a Gina Keenan um, that's kind of involved in this stuff with Whitehall Lions. So I think that's a great idea. If I could loop in those guys, um, that'd be great. Good idea, Bob. All right. Jeff, do you want to do anything else on the park report? Or park priorities? No, yeah. I think that's okay. that should be good. All right, then let's move right into the park report. All right. Um, so I had shared some shared some numbers um, to the group. Um, basically, I I had found this is my first month kind of working with the reports tab in Camp Spot, and that's going to be a a good tool. Um, as long as we have camp spot to to use and to see um, numbers on what's being used and you can you can really get some some good information from some some key numbers and the number I wanted to go over that I mentioned previously um, was that water and electric sites um, the occupancy rate was 13% and then our shelter rentals for the class was at 8.7. So that's all of the days throughout the year. Um, that means 13% of the time our water and electric sites are getting used mm -hmm. and 8% of the time our cloth shelter is getting used. So like once every week or two weeks we have a $220 rental for our cloth shelter. So those are the two things I really want to key in on. If you see all the other numbers, they are below 3%. Um, so when I'm looking at what should we be putting money into um, in our camp spot, there are in, in camp spot and our campground in general, um, I'm looking at those those differences of, yeah. you know, we've got so many more people using one through 19. How can we add more water and electric? That's why I want to add um, 15, um, 15 water to the electric only sites, add water hookups to those. And then our claw shelter, um, we've already done a few improvements like adding heat. So we'll be able to do some rentals this winter, um, which is something that hasn't been done in the past. That's some new revenue. So I'm excited about that, but there's also some fans in the claw shelter um, that we could help with the air circulation and that sort of thing. So looking at, um, those two kind of key numbers of our water and electric sites being a lot higher and our class class rental that's where we're going to make our money so i think that's you know for a county's sake that's where we want to um, be putting our improvements and efforts into and just to give you guys some ideas on those percentages 
um, this is where we really need the marketing help, I think, because uh, if you look at that, like a, a, uh, a park would be freaking out if they had 60%. Mm -hmm. That's very low. So 13 is, you know, we really need some work on that. And we need right. to focus on uh, what is going to attract those kinds of folks to that particular park. So, you know, a, a, good, a good healthy park of 100 sites, you know, would be in closer to the 80, 90 percent, you know. Is there a way of doing that uh, water yet this fall? I mean, you never know what you're going to run into right. in the spring of the year. But mm -hmm. in the fall, you can kind of anticipate, like this time of year, I said, right. okay, yes. uh -huh. what the long range forecast is. But realistically, yeah. you can work in Wisconsin until the 1st of November. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, Especially so those, when you're just, you know, digging up yeah. basically a four foot trench. Uh huh. Those um, three items I identified in park priorities, that could be I, done this year. Um, so we're looking when the best time to take care of some stuff is. Like we just had a tank, an older tank that went to, went to crap um, just this last weekend. And we don't want to do a repair on an older tank that's going to be replaced. So like we're getting one filter replaced um, that's going to be in there um, for a while. So it's like things like that where as things come up with Fix these, with these yes. three things, septic, our canoe and kayak launch, and the shank fencing, we're going to try to tackle them as soon as we can in 24-25. Okay. So tied with that then, Jack, it sounds like we've got a couple other landings that are coming up. That should help the canoe trail. Absolutely. Yep. Marketing yep. thing. Obviously. I think we identified six different ports in the middle of the river that we'd like to focus on. And then I'd like to move south from there and get down into, okay. you know, the Mississippi. The other thing, thing we had talked about earlier was simply navigability. Mm -hmm. Has anybody paddled this to see? What we, we did some drone work, Kevin and I, after the first group of storms, not this last group yep. of storms. Um, and found some hookups in the Whitehall area, as well as in between uh, Four Seasons and Crossroad. Um, but from, from about Crossroad on, it's, it's fairly so clear and very navigable. information up on the website so people know they can come mm -hmm. and paddle Absolutely, it. so I'm trying to get more uh, water trail work in, um, and mm -hmm. we've got those We've got those uh, pictures that are great and those videos, and I shared um, shared those pictures with the people that were at the meeting on June 12th in the water trail. Um, so th at least the people that are interested um, in, in the initiative, um, they got sent those via email. Just in my own adventures in the last three weeks, I've seen probably over 100 different vehicles at like Four Seasons mm -hmm. Park and Crossroads with yep. canoes and I know there was yeah. even one class reunion that that's what the guys did is go you know canoeing and mm -hmm. and I haven't tubing. seen it in past years but just being around on the weekends um, I have seen kind of an increase in talking about it and you know that's going to raise some awareness with the thing and it's just going to be good for the county so I'm going to continue to work on water trail and hiking trail development um, and working with land records and Becky on that stuff and Dave. So um, it should be good. It should be a good thing for the county. I'm excited about it. Yeah, I, th I think it would be a really great marketing opportunity too. It's something that um, is really not being done well at all. So that could be a huge thing. I mean, that's a that's a big deal. So as we're depending on people that actually yeah, know what- Outdoor rec grant, I assume is gonna cover that we got from USDA, Dave, the eight county things. I mean, it's a driftless area, right? We got rivers, we don't have lakes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if that, I hopefully is something that she's, is that Kennedy that's gonna focus on that and do that plan? <clears throat> well, no, we, we've we got um, a consultant, Bluebird Consulting, I think is the, I don't have the full bio on that <laughs> company, but they've done so <clears throat> work that 70 grand's going for. Correct. So. It's, it's, it, it's really going to be to take a look at what are the assets that we do have, what more, how can we interconnect, you know, some of the um, assets that we have as a region. Um, you know, clearly one of the things that's been talked about is the fact that, <clears throat> you know, 
well, we well part of that eight county region is part of the driftless, part of it is not. But there's also pretty extensive rec trail systems, you know, in the western county, uh, western Wisconsin, Eau Claire, Chippewa Falls area, even over into Menominee, and then there are to the south as well. But we don't have a connector, you know, between those areas. Yeah, and can you imagine? Was, yeah, mine was can you can you imagine water. if we had that rec trail? link through Trempolo County that now connected Eau Claire Chippewa Falls through Trempolo County down to the Great River State Trail, La Crosse River State Trail, uh, on all the way down to Sparta, Elroy. So that's, that's going to take a look at that. One thing I will add about that grant is we're also looking at ways that we can use that to maybe leverage a joint effort marketing grant from Travel Wisconsin to take a look at some of the promotional needs so great good thanks for your help on that buzz we appreciate that and did you have anything? um i guess the only th other thing i wanted to address i was just going to bring this up to the committee um i reached out to corp council um about a, having a beanbag tournament on saturday afternoon of ashley for the arts um mm -hmm. when we have the most people in the campground of the year mm -hmm. and um susan had told me and for this time, um, I want to use, um, since we don't have our own boards yet, um, I wanted to use East End's um, boards, and I wanted to see what the, or the committee thought about me using the boards um, and, and giving a thank you to them um, for letting me use them for this go-around, um, and it would have to be voted on um, as a committee um, if, if I was able to, to do it. So there had to be some type of writing. Um, for me to be able to use the boards and gave them like a social media thank you um, for for the use of the board. So I'll open that so up for discussion. You need a motion, need a motion for that? The mm -hmm. Okay. I move that we allow that we oh. the break. That, that Jack is allowed to use the boards and we would thank him. You'd have to say East End. East End. To use East End's boards and allow you via social media. I'll second that. Perfect. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Great job. A great idea. That super popular right now. Yep. Yep. I did that. At, yeah. Well, hint, hint. If you can use that. I did that at O'Neill Creek and uh, yeah. ran some ran some beanbag tournaments. So. I saw it's their fun. last one this last weekend. Yep, it was they just had one. Phenomenal so. uh -huh. and went over really well. So you did some good planning there. And uh, you can use that as a fundraiser possibly. Yep. Actually, yep. I don't see why we couldn't add something like that in, you know, put everybody's name in a hat and give it a weekend stay at the camp. I was, th break. yeah, I was thinking yeah, about doing know. a $10 entry um, for the event. And then we had a event on July 5th where we sold brats and hot dogs and I think the Marks would like to do that again for something Great. like that. So yeah. get some music going and a beanbag tournament and yeah. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. And I definitely would, um, I would definitely start doing some of those giveaways. If you have that opportunity to work with, um, uh, your radio stations and that kind of thing. If you can get people in, oh, yeah. even if you put the heads in the beds for free for a little bit, then they get to, you know, experience it. And that's part of it. Um, and, and specifically, if you market to that crowd that actually wants to um, to have that nature experience, it's good. All right, anything else, Jack? I no. Just, oh. Jack, do you have a regular slot with WHTL to talk about? I don't have a slot currently. I, I, um, would, I, know I think that would be almost a community kind of event that you could certainly bring up. Mm -hmm. So that shouldn't be a problem. You could put that on not only Facebook, but you should be able to put it on any of the community calendars. Yep. I'm think, pretty good with coming up sorry. with uh, camp or Canva promos yeah. and, and Beautiful. doing that Actually, stuff. Actually, there, there is yeah. a slot available on WHTL <laughs> that back to the outdoors on Thursday morning. Thursday and that's morning. what, because that's about, I hear that when I'm in the barn, and I think it would be great to have you on there just to remind people about the park, talk about the park, what we're doing, give an update. Great. Yeah. Bob, thank you so much. And with it being this late in the game, it might be good to do something like that um, to promote yes, it. for sure. Um, Absolutely. So Absolutely. I can put together a flyer this yep. afternoon and then yep. hopefully yep. reach out to those guys. In the county. All right. And then good partners. anything else? You forgot the rodeo. I, the rodeo is next. That's next, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing else? Okay. So you want to go right into the rodeo? Sure. Jack? Yep. 
Um, so Ricardo and Rosa held their um, rodeo on August 3rd. We had 620 people at the park. Um, so nothing quite that to scale at the park before. So it was um, quite the event. Um, awesome. There's a lot going on, um, but I think it was it was good for the community, and we're serving a, um, kind of a, a heritage niche. and a yeah. niche and a culture that hasn't that's underserved, honestly. So great. Um, it's it's great that we're doing it, and it's great that we had some approval. So I went through. Um, I had a special event permit that I needed to get signatures from uh, Brett and Neil and Susan and Becky. Um, as well as the health department and Jen. Um, so they were all, all signed it on July 15th. Um, we got that approval and then um, kind of went about planning the event with Ricardo, communication pretty much every day um, with planning for the first time. Um, first, first time you do an event, it's always the hardest. Keep hearing that. So yeah. I definitely agree with that. Um, but now we kind of know what to expect. Um, we could plan for the future, um, but we will have some things that need to be addressed, um, definitely. So I'd like to go over with Ricardo um, in a meeting next week, what what went well versus what needs to improve, um, and then just talk about what we think needs to be done for the next one. He is favoring um, September 7th with Labor Day. Um, I know, the what's that? Mm -hmm. Labor Day is the second. It will be the following week. So instead of that first, he texted me um, yesterday and was like, I'm favoring the seventh. And I told him at the rodeo event, after seeing the parking, how it was, I, d I was like, I don't like the thought of having a lot of campers at the campground and then having this going on. So we're going to have less people there on the seventh. So it just seems like a better option. Mm -hmm. okay, Becky? Are you done? Or I just, yes. I wanted to thank Jack again because yes, it, a, that it takes was a lot to get all those people aside. <laughs> yeah. <together>. And <laughs> it was a long process. I mean, just putting everything together. We did a lot of meetings. He did a lot of work on um, putting all of the process together, which we didn't have in place previous. And so now we have this set up for this type of event, but also for other events that might want to happen. I just, and that he has done a lot of, um, hands-on work for this and he went and attended to make sure that things yeah, went well and about so six great. hours on saturday yeah, night so and i wanted to see how everyone was getting getting out of there I appreciate on the way it. so like that's one of the things that needs to be dealt with is like parking control on the way it. out we need to have lighted wands and things like that so actually um, i went for a ride on saturday afternoon about 2 30 and i uh -huh. said i wanted to see how this looks yeah yeah you and should it, have seen it at like six or ten i thought it looked good was, and then i was uh -huh. there at 6 30 sunday morning to see what kind of mess there yeah. was there was no mess that's they did great. a great that's job awesome. there was no mess uh -huh. that's good to, that's good, good to hear job, Jack. yes and jack i think one of the things that um that that is really going to help with is those uh, camper nights yeah. too you know when you have something um, different and that particular demographic is growing very fast in mm -hmm. the camping industry so I think that could be a neat little a neat little niche for us hopefully what this is gonna lead to is monkey see monkey do exactly you bet Bob absolutely mm -hmm. so okay so then if there's nothing else on that we can go to the canoe and kayak approach discussion sure yeah so um few things to talk about here um wasn't able to find like anything specific for like an insurance for the launch so i would love to hear or and do some more research um and would love to hear opinions on that um so i had a few different um ways that we could have went about this um like a traditional launch um was quoted at about 6600 um that's and building costs or insurance costs that's build or that's materials okay. um and getting them so in, installation and excavation price would run up a little bit but those materials um were identified by reed at 6600 in 2023 um and then kevin lean gave me um this new type of like fiberglass um, that you can look into um, that might slash some costs and as well as a floating dock. Um, I wanted to 
just say that I talked to John Austin. I wasn't able to get a hold of Neil um, at all this month. Um, they're busy over there or at the highway. Um, reached out a few times, but I was able to get a hold of John, and he didn't seem to have any problem with uh, black topping um, down there. So he thinks that's a valiant option, and I'd like to go to the commission and, and get that approved. Um, but there is some things to kind of think about about how we go about it, especially being on a river. Um, so, and the DNR is good with that. They'll work with you on that. They they favor something that's a little bit that's more a traditional. Little more okay. Uh -huh. Great. Kevin um, doesn't like the idea of the floating dock on the river either. So it's like that pre that pre meeting uh -huh. is going to do a lot. And I also want to loop in that Nick Lashke. Um, the accessibility coordinator. I think he was hired a couple of years ago, so it's a fairly new position for the state, uh -huh. um, but he wants to go out and help in situations like this. And I attended his, uh, his meeting um, at the WPRA Parks Conference um, in, in January, and he had some great things to say. Um, so he, what he wanted to say like during that meeting in January was make sure you reach out to me before you start doing stuff. Right. You know, because once you start doing stuff, there's going to be less that I'm going to be able to help with and have opinions on. So there's a couple different ways on how we can, you know, figure out the process together. Um, the quote for the floating dock was at 12,000. Um, and then I gave some excavation. Um, if you're able to read the packet, there's a few examples um, that I went over um, with materials from the village of Weston. I got kind of their breakdown on how um, they put their kayak launch in 2015. So I'm gonna know kind of what materials are needed as well as um, some budget guidelines that I found and some excerpts from the um, National Park Service about, you know, launches on a river. So there's, there's quite a few things to think about and I think you need to really lean on professional help on this type of stuff and I'd say the motion I have that I had put in the packet I don't I'm not concrete on um, so I would like to have some discussion behind this and maybe come up with the motion as a as a group and um, so I can move forward on a canoe and kayak launch at at Petrick Park but definitely open to questions um, so yeah well, some of the research that I, I did on it, Jack, a little bit was it really does depend very much on the land itself. Yeah, it does. And that seems to be the big key thing. So I think we do have some experts in here on the land itself. Mm -hmm. So I think that is really what we should be focused on. You Absolutely. know, what will, you know, how that how that works best. Mm -hmm. Because you can put in any, any uh, sort of system in, but it might not fit with your Correct. particular property. Yep. So I think that's, we've, we've got to count on our experts. And we have that. to think about capacity, mm -hmm. work capacity, and who we've got, and where are we going to put it. Like, there's a lot of things, particularly with the floating dock, um, that, doesn't, that doesn't mesh. Yep, um, yep. So... Well, then I think maybe the focus would be not on the floating dock. Mm -hmm. Does that sound like what you, so I'm you've got an accessibility expert then that you're working with, right? Yes. I haven't reached out to him yet, oh. but I would like to after this meeting. Mm -hmm. I think that's easy peasy. Yeah. And, and that's then a get, smart thing getting to him do there. right away. Uh -huh. Yeah. Getting him there as well as, you know, getting um, good opinions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about... Uh, Accessibility parking on that site. You have to think about a parking area and maintenance. Yeah. And what That's we have with ten, new then? yeah, what we we have ten sites down there, so we'd have to make a camp spot revision and probably have its own little area. So basically, you'd have to probably move. If you wanted to have tent camping down in the lower loop, you'd have to move it to the first half and then have that second half of the lower loop be all. Um, kayak and canoe based in if you go out there on a Saturday there's trucks and in vehicles parked, parked there on the sites anyways. like that they're, yeah. they're parked on the sites anyway so it if we had something designated it would be a little bit more clear for the public okay mm -hmm. so I think we should 
Yeah, let's, let's, what do we need to do to pull this motion together so that we can get some action yeah. going? I'd say let's come up that. together with a, yeah, a yeah. group motion where it's just, I'm reaching out to the right people, giving you guys updates, um, but I don't think the floating dock is, yeah. is okay. really an option moving forward, but we have to think about how can we plan for accessibility without that floating dock. You're so, further off just getting that floating dock right out of there. Yeah. If you want to make it accessible, you widen out the site. Mm -hmm. There you go. You widen it out and you got to bring it to a certain grade anyway. And just yep. by looking at it down there, you're only looking at about a three foot grade anyway. So right. it isn't much excavation out, mm -hmm. out of it. So the biggest thing is just width versus say have only about six or eight feet for uh, a canoe or something like that, bring it up to about 14, 16 feet. And if we so could have a blacktop parking lot with a path going right. to the water. You'll never support then it down there. Then you're great, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, I think, Jack, if you would work with the Rod and Gun Club from Independence, they've got their stuff together on these last few that they've built and did some investigating instead of throwing a lot of money away at uh, excavation and engineering costs. Yeah, they, I, I met with Daryl at, the, at their site about a week ago um, and talked about how their process was with bidding and he, they had eight different companies mm -hmm. um, bid the project. So I would love to do something similar and you know put an RFP out and and actually, you know, after the first thing was they had to wait for uh, nesting season to be done. They were hoping to have it done by the 4th of July. Mm -hmm. And here now we're working on Labor Day and it's still not started, you know, mm -hmm. so they're a little disgusted. Yeah, yep. I helped them with that permit and get it submitted. Um, they, they reached out to me wanting help with getting that submitted and with everything that's going on, I've been kind of handing things off to them. Um, the last month or two saying hey you guys i've got things i need to to do for the county um can you please like you know get a contractor involved and they they settled on a contractor and mm -hmm. they're talking with them i think he's from blair yep. um so it's good information to be able to share to whitehall lions and for our our launch um so it's I'm learning a lot in a short time have they went through some accessibility consulting too just I don't think it's my, with us being a, on a public site. Um, it's I know Whitehall's been doing it a little bit more than say Indy Elk on there. So that bridge is uh, um, in between Independence and Whitehall, um, and it's their own own property. Um, so they're I don't think they're looking at it as much as quite as as the Whitehall Lions being in Colonel. So guy, if you got an access, he's willing to give you some input. Oh, yeah. yeah. Head contracting guy? Well, the guy at DNR the, who's accessibility. Yes, I assume that's who I, yeah. you, the name you mentioned. Mm -hmm. so. And yeah. like you said, it may be just as simple as making it larger wider, and wider. Whatever. So you're, you need a motion that would include something like you need an RFP for... Uh, mm -hmm. Would it be an RFP for a canoe, kayak, launch? How about... Um, approval to move forward on pl um, putting out an RFP on an accessible canoe kayak launch at what do you uh, with a park uh, something about with a parking area with available parking with area available parking mm -hmm. okay I would make that motion I'll okay. second it <laughs> all right well that sounds good any discussion all in favor aye cool any opposed good to go we're moving forward. <laughs> Any future agenda items that we need to add? I've got one. Sure. Uh, Dave, you used that photographer a couple of years ago about the countywide photographer. Who owns the photos, the county or the photographer? The county owns them. Is it a possibility? You know, you're trying to boost tourism and things that look how it looks in the county. Put that on the website with one of these revolving slideshows is like you got. I mean, you've, you're probably sitting what, but eight, ten thousand dollars worth of photos. Three thousand. You know, put those on a sliding show because right now we're going to get into the busy season of the for the county. Usually, right. where I see the most amount of tourism that come in busy is the colors. fall color season. Yeah. And and we've been pushing fall <clears throat> more heavily the last year or two because it has been you know from what I understand you know with especially with hotel room nights that fall you know summer. Right, Linda, it does pretty good fall, kind of tails off a little bit. Your high season is June, July, August, 
Yep. Yeah. And those are those are the kinds. So yes, fall is something we're emphasizing. But I 100% agree with you, Bob. Um, we do have a we sort of have a slideshow. We're limited a little bit by what we can do with our current website. Yeah. But we've got some newer pictures we can work yeah, into we, the mix. Yeah, we could do a little slideshow on Facebook. It's that very would help too. yes, yeah. and we and we've been trying to do more reels. In fact, yeah. I was hoping I had, I was hoping I would have um, the final cut to look at from our o visit Eau Claire tiktok instagram reel that they put together for us but it's not ready but that should be coming out soon all right <clears throat> wonderful any other but yes we we do own the pictures and we can use them and we also some of the other communities if they want to use some of those pictures yeah. all they need to do is reach out and we can yeah. give permission as long as they're credited in trump local and we did speak at our marketing meetings if anybody has pictures that they want to get on sure. facebook or anything else just get them to dave and he will get them up there so that's, that's really important to get them from all areas. And, you know, Gene, I know you do such a good job of getting in, in, into the community up in your area, and it'd be just great. Any pictures at all that we have, especially with fun, smiling faces and people having excitement, you know, that kind of thing, that would be great. I, I am going to, um, and I talked to Dave a little bit about it, I'm going to travel that Osseo to Oliva area awesome. and take some pictures of, there's a bunch of pop-up businesses with yeah. flowers and vegetables and women who are doing really fun things in that area. So I'm gonna let's start, cause the flowers are like crazy right now. So I'm gonna yeah. those yeah. <clears throat> and, and by all means, share those Jeannie and you know, Linda, you know, we talked a little bit about, you know, lifting up and promoting business more. Mm -hmm. We have an economic development, uh, economic development Facebook page as well. Oh, and wonderful. you know, so, I yeah. do, I do use that on occasion. We have not used that as much because the emphasis has been on tourism. But you know, the more, believe me, anything you feed me, I will eat and well, and I'll and, and it all share. To you with, you and who they are and, and what they're doing. You know, yes. and, cool yeah. thing is, it's a lot of women doing these pop up businesses. Yep, bakeries online and flowers and a little coffee shop. And well, well, let's do that for the a future agenda. Let's have um, let's get Jeannie. Would you be willing to give a little report on that? And you know what would be awesome? Your speaking skills are amazing. So seriously, so why Thank don't you. so why don't you um, <laughs> even if and if you don't, uh, we could talk about this later as as like how how easy right. it is to do. But you know do a little interviewing with those folks and I, actually do it as a, um, as a, you know, record it. And wow, would that be great? I mean, they would love it. Mm -hmm. it. The videos obviously are better for, you know, the social media piece of it. And you've got the style yeah, to I do it, work. girl. That That's would be one great. thing I'm able to do is walk and talk right now. See, there Not you go. Bending well, and twisting and, you know, so I can. Are we still planning on having next month at the park or is that going to be discussed? Yeah. Um, it, it, the next item on the agenda is uh, the next meeting Just, date, which as is... Far as, as far as future agenda items, you can put on um, for September <clears throat> um, summer uh, tourism campaign analytics. I just got late yesterday afternoon a report from River Travel Media on our first two months, and I was going to share some of that in my report, and I forgot to Is that going to gonna be something we're going to need more... AV equipment for that? I'll, I'll make handouts. Okay. Yeah, All I'll right. make handouts okay. for people. Great. Jack, have you thought any more about our discussion about having a end of the year uh, at the park for these campers to come in and they yeah. can just leave their camper there? Mm -hmm. End of the year special. Yeah, yep. Uh, Dave and I uh, were planning to do that last week, um, but didn't get to it. Um, so we'll probably get to that this week and getting that promoted. It's going to be like a hunting slash Labor Day promo. Even if you know you put something on uh, the board down there with all these people coming for Ashley days, so just a exactly. publication yeah. and just, hey, we liked it here. We're gonna come back and in that, you know, for the end of the, end yeah, of the year. Yeah, and I think uh, using all those people out at the park for the rodeo, that was a missed opportunity by me to, to maybe get some promotion out for the park. I, but you I'll know, talk about that with Ricardo. Yeah, yeah, I'll talk you know, about that with yeah. Ricardo about we got yeah. more people at the park um, for that than you know, um, basically of, Ashley I mean, is the only time we've had that many people in the park. So well, let's do if we could like get this, if it's for you know September, that advertisement yeah. out for Ashley and for a rodeo event, that's 
you know, one in person advertisement to twelve hundred people. Yep. Did you get what, uh, campers from the rodeo event? And what's that? Any additional campers that people just stayed no. over after they? Well, went? I think one of the things with that is just the advertising piece of that. Mm -hmm. I think it's important, and maybe what you want to do is, and this is something that, Jeannie, if you want to ask your folks when you're up there um, with them, is do you have any interest? We could do something with an actual bag where you hand them out not only information about the park, but give them a bag. So if other people have other little pop-up businesses or something they want to share, um, you want to stick in uh, something from the the hotel, whatever, you have an extra brochure, until we get our whole thing put together, that would be better than nothing. Just, you know, anybody that wants to put it in, just say, get it to you by a certain time, and, mm -hmm. you know, we yeah. can have some volunteers stuff them up. Yeah, one other comment on kind of the cultural aspect of the county, we were at, <laughs> I was looking for feeder pigs, so I ended up in an, at an Amish place to get some, but what they handed out was a map of the county with all the Amish families that market something. Yes. And the, it's it's a jam-packed eight and a half by 11 page full of small businessmen that mm -hmm. we tend not to promote or look by. Mm -hmm. If I can find it, yeah. <laughs> but I just went and they said, well, we don't have them, but here. And I looked at the map and they're all mapped on the road Very and cool. what they market yep. and what they sell from wood products to vegetables to meats whatever it blew me away they've got their own marketing strategy within their own community perfect sounds good um and then dave maybe we will add for the future um agenda items maybe we'll add um for from our marketing thing just if anybody has um additional prizes that they want to give you um and that Jeannie might be something for up in that area too. I think we're real covered on more the southern part of it, you know, of the county. But um, just people that want to, maybe they'll want to give a free thing of flowers or whatever. But then when Dave puts it on the social media as a little contest, that helps a, a lot. You know, maybe the historical society would want to give a free cookbook or something that they have. It's crazy what people will do for a free item. You know, so I think those kinds of things are, are great. So anybody else got future agenda items? I don't have a future agenda item, but that I just sent that report on the campaign analytics. I didn't want that to just sit for a month. You can look great. at it and we can talk about that. Super. And then the next meeting date will be September. I got something, Lori. Oh, sorry. Um, I forgot to go over my CIP update, Becky, during park report. Should we put that as a future agenda item or go over that before the end of the meeting? There's okay. a meeting here in 15 okay. minutes. Okay. Yep. So, all right. So we'll put that on the next meeting. Yep. Got that? CIP update. Okay. Capital improvement plan. All right. Anything park. else before we adjourn? No, oh, thank you. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, Jack. No, thank you. Good job. Thanks for coming.